Let's talk about a weapon that nobody talks about. A weapon that nobody respects. The straight swords. And why we need to bring this weapon some justice. It is by far one of the best weapons in the game. Yet it's always under the shadow of the katana, great swords, claw swords, and even curved swords. You know them, almost every enemy uses them, and you find them all over the place. So why does nobody talk about it? And while I've seen some love in the arenas, the overall community overlooks this powerhouse of weapon. This doesn't come as a surprise as the closest class of weapon to them is a katana and many people see the katana as a better option. And why wouldn't they? It has a higher AR, greater reach, bleed, unsheath, and just an awesome set of somber weapons. Knowing that most other weapons are fantastical, they're huge, they're massive, and they have these really cool unique set of things they do. Well, what if I told you the straight swords are still the superior option? Okay, this is going to take a lot to explain. Okay, let's start off with three reasons why. Move set, square off, and accessibility. Accessibility is self-explanatory. You find these weapons all over the place. Common enemies drop them, you can buy them from effectively any merchant. In fact, these weapons, you pretty much get power stance before any other weapon in the game. Hell, technically the first somber weapon you could get in the game is going to be a straight sword. Meanwhile, let's look at the katana. Yes, you could start off with katana, and yes, you could get a katana from early on in the game, but unfortunately, you could only get one of each type of katana unless you start off as a samurai class and get two uchi katanas, which I don't recommend, because let's talk about the weapon with the superior moveset. Katanas have a pretty troubled moveset, at least when you power stance them. They're often these really weird delayed attacks that effectively set you up to get traded by your opponent. Effectively, unless you're using roll or jump attacks, because you're not attacking at the same time, and because just the two-handed power sets moveset is so poor, you may as well just be one-handing this weapon. Yes, because two-handing a katana has a lot of problems unless you're using a Nagakiba, mostly because its moveset just kind of comes off as weird. You don't have the nice vertical swipes you have with just one-handing the weapon. Meanwhile, the only issue I have with the straight sword moveset is the fact that you have a weird delay attack with your running attack, which seems like a bad thing, but in PvP, this is incredibly useful for roll catching. In fact, it really throws off the opponent's timing, making it almost the best roll catch in the game, even compared to curved greatswords and the carrion piercer. The recovery is just amazing on these weapons too. Like, first of all, one, when you're attacking with these, they attack at the same time and they attack fast. So if you have something like Milson's Prosthesis or any of the winged insignias, just use them. You're going to be stacking damage incredibly fast. In fact, the recovery on these are better than the curved swords and they do an incredible amount of damage. There are very, very few weapons with this versatile of a moveset. The katana is one of them, specifically the Nagakiba is an awesome weapon, but it is the only katana that can contend with how versatile straight swords are. And while reach might seem like an issue with this weapon, let me just tell you, I'm going to go back to the recovery frames for a second to express to you how ridiculous this is. You could trade with your opponent and play super risky and just keep on going. You could go into the fire, into the fight and just keep on trading and trading and almost never get hit because honestly you're just attacking and then dodging because there's like almost no delay on it and this is not even the same with curve swords this is why i believe these are actually better weapons even if they have a slightly lower dps and when i say slightly lower i don't even mean by much i'm talking probably about a five percent lower the only thing that really curve swords have on this is the running attack which is good for PvE, but is not as good as the roll catch for the PvP for the straight swords. But all of this is not why it's a better weapon. Accessibility and moveset is one thing. The high DPS is, a, is another thing too. But what makes it better is the square off. So what is square off? Well, imagine unsheath, but better. Imagine giant's hunt but better while having about a comparable damage to both Giant's Hunt and Unsheath, 
the advantage with this one is the cost and the poise damage. It has a higher poise damage than both of those, but it costs almost nothing. It is half as much as Unsheep, and it does more poise damage. That's insane. And it is able to poise break most bosses in two to three hits. And the best part about this is it benefits from the Spear Talisman as it is a counterattack, making it technically having more potential than both Giant's Hunt or Unsheep. Because you could just keep on spamming and use this, doing more damage and poise damage at the same time. And this is an Ash of War you start with. Like, this right here is something that you get at the beginning of the game. And getting the actual Ash of War is within the first area of the game. The main concern and the only problem with this Ash of War is getting interrupted. But if you have about 60 poise, you could just run through the entire game spamming nothing but square off, and as long as you have that poise, nothing is really going to stop you. Making it probably the easiest way to play the game. You are going to win every single trade with any boss 9 times out of 10. I don't even know how this has not gone nerfed yet, but I absolutely love it. And while I could go on talking about something such as the Warhawks Talon, let me express to you a different weapon, a weapon that people just completely overlook. The Ornament Straight Sword. The AR is shockingly low, and yet somehow it is one of the highest DPS weapons in the game. Like, it is not even comparable. It, like, yes, it has a lower AR than a dagger, but its Ash of War is where it shines. This is not even an optimized build, and I'm just tearing through Placidus Axe, this is not even with the benefits of the Spear Talisman. And this is the first summer weapon you could get in the game. And yet nobody builds this. Nobody uses these. Which, Jesus Christ. Like, I get it. I know the AR of this weapon looks comically low. I get it. It is less than a dagger. But when you get the Winged Sword Talisman, you look at how fast you attack. And when you get that plus 100 to holy damage, which may not seem like much, that can all stack together to make an insane combo that is just hard to justify why it's even in the game. Before going any further, there's one thing I do want to express. There is no weapon outside of spears, claws, and curved swords that have a comparable DPS, all of which have their own set of problems such as stamina consumption, slow recovery, or a much more limited moveset and even a lack of reach compared to these weapons. Effectively, for a new player, unless they rely on bleed, I 100% recommend straight swords for them because it is going to teach them the game much better and it is probably the easiest way to play the game in a way that is intuitive. Now, the last thing, let's talk about PvP for a moment because honestly, I know not everyone cares too much about it, but these weapons play a dangerous role. Yes, it is going to be risky using these weapons because they have poor reach, but it is something that has a lot of roll catch capability, an incredibly high DPS, and it allows you to pull off incredible trades. But because you have to trade because of the lack of reach, I do not recommend going a light build. In fact, I would recommend for you to go a heavier build and build something like Storm Stomp because poise breaking is going to be very, very dangerous. If you're going to get staggered every single time that they hit you, that's going to be a problem. But if you could stagger them and pull off any trade, you're just going to straight up win that fight within just one combo, which is insane. And it looks like it's unfair because it kind of is. Hello, guys. I do appreciate you guys for watching the video, at least all the way this far in. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Please consider liking and subscribing if you like what I had to say. I know this is a more boring video. This is more basic. This is just something that I do feel passionate about. I absolutely love this weapon and I always try to go for it. If I want to play easy mode, I always go for straight swords. It makes the game even easier than the Bloodhound's Fang. Yes, the Bloodhound's Fang is probably one of the best weapons for a speed run just because they upgrade much faster. But trust me, these things are beasts, especially with Square Off. I'm going to just show off a couple more clips on PvP. So if you don't want to watch it, you don't really have to. 
please consider liking and subscribing again, and thank you. Have an awesome day.